that will definitely. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Stamp Chat. I'll let everyone get their sea legs and find their way into the room before we get started. Happy National Stamp Collecting Month to everyone. I hope that you have recruited somebody. That's my challenge to each and every one of you to bring a non-collector into the hobby. Find out what it is that they like. Maybe it's cooking, maybe it's cars, maybe it's singers. You will find a stamp, I promise you. And everybody here on our, on our presenter panel knows that, what I'm, what I'm saying to be true. So I'll just give it a few more moments and then we're going to get started with this second debut of uh, Stamp Stories. All right, and with that said, hello and welcome. My name is Heidi. I'm with the American Philatelic Society. Thank you so much for joining us on our new series, Stamp Stories, where we hear from philatelists or stamp collectors uh, and hear about their origin stories and add that human interest component. Of course, we love to know about perfs and watermarks, et cetera, and different topicals, but to hear the human side of collecting, well, that, that's another doorway into the hobby. And our APS director, Scott English, is fond of saying that there are many doors to the hobby. So perhaps we can introduce new collectors to philately by hearing our stories. So we bring you this new series, as I said, Stamp Stories. And if you have a story to share, by all means, send us an email. That's Heidi at stamps.org, uh, Heidi at stamps.org, and your subject line will be Stamp Stories. Today's Stamp Chat is sponsored by the APS Membership Department. This year, we launched the 2020 Challenge, and our goal is to share the hobby with 2,000 new members. So we're getting close, but we've got about three more months or two and a half more months, and we could really use your help to push us to meeting our goal. This ambitious goal requires all of us and only you. You guys know the best of, of what all uh, APS has to offer. You're our best recruiters. And we're so serious about this. We're with our 2020 challenge. We have three APS lifetime memberships that you, whether you're a member and you recruit somebody or you're a new member, you're automatically uh, enrolled in that, that contest. So help us help you make it an even better American Philatelic Society that the, all the, the memberships contribute to the APRL and all the great programming that we are offering and will continue to grow for the hobby. Now, before we begin, we have a few housekeeping items to take care of. Today's session is a webinar and as such, all audio and visual video of attendees will be muted and turned off respectively throughout the presentation. Please, please feel free to use the chat box to chat all you want with each other and other attendees and of course the panelists. Now use the Q&A box. We'll try to get some Q&A going. Uh, last week we were down the wire. Um, so if you have a question and we're unable to answer that, go ahead and uh, put it in the Q&A box and I will try to make note and get you an answer. Otherwise, go to APS YouTube channel. This will be up uh, momentarily. Watch your social feeds for when the recording will be made available. So with all that said, I am so delighted to have our presenters here today. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got philatelists that I have been able to form relationships on, namely on social media. And we have people from all over the country and all over the world. So thank you so much to each and every one of you for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna go in alphabetical order. So our first stamp story comes from uh, Michelle Bresso, who joins us from California, where she is ten a tenured professor of communications. And we love when communication professors are with us because, uh, well, you tell that whole postal history story and, and correspondence. So thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us. Tell us your stamp story. Well, I can start by telling you that stamps earned me an A in my schoolwork. 
I think that's the best thing about stamps. They help us stand out. I have been collecting stamps since I was in fourth grade. And like many of us, the first time I saw that incredible stamp, I was hooked. It was a stamp that looked something like this. I'm going to share my screen and you can see these stamps from Paraguay. And they were mysterious to me, interesting, different. Uh, I came from a blue collar family in South San Francisco. I didn't know anything about fine art, but as I began to see these different stamps shared by a teacher, I realized this was something I wanted to know more about. I was given stamps very similar to these ones and happened to be assigned as a uh, student to write a report on Paraguay. And so I used the stamps to illustrate my report and I earned an A. That was the beginning of my stamp collecting career, if you will. And today I have uh, a story that is maybe not unlike some of you. It's a story of a collection and a, um, a process of collecting that has evolved over the years. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the five decades that I have been a collector. Uh, specifically, I want you to know that my stamp story is a story that has evolved. So I'm gonna talk about a br very briefly about the early school years, my years as a college undergrad, building my career as a young professional, uh, collecting stamps all along the way, and then how it looks today. So school years, okay, let's face it. When you're a kid, you're broke. I had big desire, small budget. We can all relate to that. So the excitement was discovering things like approvals and collecting stamps that would arrive. And I only had this much money to spend and I would agonize over what my choices were, but I could only pick one, maybe one or two items. I remember vividly answering ads in Lynn's Stamp News, finding interesting stamps, cutting out the ad, sending away for stamps, and literally taping coins to cardboard to send it off to pay for those stamps. And oh, when they arrived, what a joy. I just loved every minute of, of running through those different stamps, sorting them, looking at them. It was so much fun. It didn't cost me a lot, but I had a great time. Of course, as I evolved, so as a person, so did my uh, collection of stamps. And in the college years, I began to focus on US stamps. Of course, when we start out, we wanna collect the world. I kind of still feel that way, honestly. But I started with US stamps and I discovered Mr. Z's stamp shop in Burlingame, California. Mr. Z was a well-seasoned philatelist who ran a wonderful store. And when I would visit at home, coming away from college for holidays and such, I would spend at least all day of one day in Mr. Z's, sitting on a stool at the counter, a glass top counter, and going through his stock books and learning from him. He was so patient with me. If you know any stamp vendors or shop owners like this, boy, give them a pat on the back because they make a difference in, in our hobby. And he taught me about stamps, about the difference between mint and hinged and how, how we could collect. He gave me new ideas and every step along the way, I learned from him. I loved every minute of being in his shop. Uh, once I built my career, things changed uh, in my collection. As I graduated from college, I, I moved away. And now I wanted to collect, but I wanted a little more flexibility than just what I could collect in a US collection. And so I began to look at uh, stamp shows, to visit them, to travel and see other stamps and to discover topicals. That was something new. Remember that desire to collect the world? Well, topicals gave me a chance to look at stamps from all over the globe, but not have to be responsible for collecting every stamp in every country, which of course was not gonna be possible for me. Uh, 
I'll show you some of the stamps, just a couple that uh, helped fuel my interest in topical collections. So one of my collections is Cats on Stamps. Uh, you can see why in the background here. And I loved the, the difference uh, of the cats that were represented on all of those different stamps. I've been a lifelong lover of cats. And so my collection made it possible for me to extend that joy in a new area. But it also allowed me to represent who I am. And one of my topicals is typewriters on stamps. Why? Well, because in fifth grade, I taught myself to type using my mother's portable typewriter and her old high school typing manual that she still had. Every day during the summer, going through several lessons until I could type. And now I love typewriters. And of course, they are featured on stamps and that's awesome. So I have a collection of typewriters on stamps. I'm also a lifelong baseball fan, go Giants. And here is an error stamp of, uh, featuring my favorite player, Willie Mays. Uh, and finally, uh, another topical, there are several topicals and I'm not gonna show you all of them, but one quirky topical collection I'm just beginning is pine cones on stamps. I can't really explain it. I love pine cones. I love everything about them. They're fresh, they're natural, they're seasonal, and I think they are just the most beautiful thing. And so guess what? There are pine cones on stamps. So as a result, I collect that particular topical as well and enjoy every bit of finding stamps from different parts of the world as a result. So today, the sky's the limit in terms of my collection. And the fact that we're here on Zoom is a big reason why. I think we've benefited from the fact that while we lament not being able to go to stamp shows, we're connecting with people from all over the world who share our hobby and our, and our pursuit and love of these beautiful objects, and that they tell a story about us that we can share with many more people. As a result of our connections through Zoom and other technology, I've been able to attend, for example, CPEX, StampEx, uh, American Topical Association workshops, and of course, the many stamp chats that APS offers. I never have been able to do most of those things without this technology. So as a result, my interest is growing, my knowledge is growing, and uh, my collection is growing. I'll share one last stamp that I'd like you to see. It represents a new country I've decided to launch, Pitcairn Islands, because of its rich history and the fact that the island is lar largely populated even to this day by the descendants of the mutineers of the HMS Bounty. What a fabulous history and I want to know more. Stamps are going to allow me to explore that history. And that is the joy of what we all do, collecting stamps that represent us. Heidi, thanks for this great opportunity. Oh, thank you. I have the goosebumps after that. It, it really, they, stamps truly do allow us to tell a story about ourselves and the country that we live in and, and, the, and, and the stories of countries throughout the world. And the fellowship that comes from Philately is, um, it's extraordinary. So thank you so much for sharing your stamp story. I really appreciate it. Our next story comes from Dr. Warshal Fazan. She is the president of Esper. So we are really excited to hear about how she got into collecting. I, I have not heard your origin story yet. So I, I, I don't know if she's gonna bring up her brother, but there, it's a brother sister duo out there that's, that's collecting together, but uh, really looking forward to hearing what you have to share with us. And if anyone's unfamiliar with uh, Esper, please visit esperstamps.org for um, that's the Ebony, well, Ebony Society of Philatelic, uh, keep help me, Esther. Events and reflections. Thank you, thank you. But a <laughs> dynamite and and a dynamite group too. If you're looking to join a philatelic organization, Esper is phenomenal. So with that, thanks for sharing your story, Warshaw. 
Thank you so much, Heidi, for the invitation. I'm so excited to to be here today. And while I'm talking, um, I'll ask my AAPS colleague to, to share the screen um, for me. So um, where does my story start? My story starts, I won't tell you how old I am, but in the, the early 1970s, I was a cute kid in rural North Carolina and um, fell in love with the idea of stamps. And for several years in my childhood, I would receive a bag of stamps from all over the world. Um, and I would match those stamps with images in a binder. And it was always so exciting for me when those stamps came in the mail, um, because I felt like I was touching all aspects of the world. And um, it was definitely a surprise to see the different stamps and, and, and the history behind those stamps. Um, I did that for a number of years when, as a child. And I guess at some point life happened. Um, there was piano lessons, there were dance lessons, there were private food lessons, and there was homework. And so unlike the beautiful story that Michelle shared, where she continued to um, be connected with stamps, um, after a few years, um, other things took over as, as priority for me. So fast forward to 2013, 2014. My older brother, Walter Faison, um, is president of ESPER. And as Heidi mentioned, ESPER is the Ebony Society of Philatelic Events and Reflections. This is a nonprofit organization that promotes the collecting of stamps and philatelic material depicting people and events related to the African diaspora. It also encourages and supports the interest and participation of black people in all aspects of Flatley. My brother was president of ESPER at that time and because he was so immersed into stamp collecting, he was talking about it more and more and I must admit, I was all caught up in all of the excitement. And he talked about the wonders of the stamp family, of Esper, of going to various stamp shows and all the outreach involved. And I really became intrigued about it. And in particularly, I became intrigued about Esper's mission. And in my mind, if I didn't know about Esper, that meant a lot of people didn't know about ESPER. And I asked him at that time, so what, what kind of outreach do you do with social media? And he gave me a very blank stare. <laughs> and um, so I volunteered um, at that time to, to help them out on social media and developed a Twitter account, um, Pinterest account, Facebook account, as well as an Instagram account. Um, but I think the beauty of that relationship with my brother, um, in addition to his love for stamp collecting and Esper, was that he honored me with a membership of Esper. So the first year I was a member of Esper, um, he gifted me a membership. Um, and I think that was a great opportunity to get my feet wet um, in regards to um, re-engaging my interest um, with stamp collecting. And I would encourage any of us to really consider that, you know, when we, when we are interacting with friends or acquaintances and we have the means of gifting someone uh, a membership for a year, 
in a stamp society that that we consider it, especially if we have the means, because that's a, a great way of of pulling them in um, to your stamp family. Um, and after I became a member of Esper, very much like Michelle, I wanted to collect everything. And I remember the initial reaction of feeling a little overwhelmed by being interested in everything. And one of um, a fellow philatelists said to me and encouraged me to focus on a few interests. And the interests that I began to focus on really mirrored who I was as an individual. Um, As a physician and as a psychiatrist, um, I love anything related to medicine and science. So that is one of my interests that I collect. And you see on the slide um, um, a stamp called The Doctor um, that honors um, healthcare professionals issued in 1947. Um, Alzheimer's, is something that I'm very passionate about. I spent a number of years um, seeing patients with Alzheimer's and doing research related to Alzheimer's. Um, And so that's one of my favorite stamps. Another one of my interests um, relates to women. Um, And so one of my all time favorite stamps is the Toni Morrison stamp that was issued um, from Sweden, which highlights her Nobel prize. I think with stamps for me, um, it's important um, that these stamps really are a window to history, history that um, people may not get on their own. Um, And so it allows for a conversation to develop. I was extremely excited um, in regards to the issuance of the 19th Amendment stamp recently. And I think stamps have a role to be as inclusive as possible and embrace ethnic minorities, embrace various genders. Um, And I think it's important that they play that role. And so for example, um, as you look at the 19th Amendment stamp, there are various shades in regards to skin color there. Um, for the women represented on those on those stamps. Um, and I like that because to me, that's very inclusive. I also collect stamps related to childhood interests. And that's a big bag um, of anything that reminds me of my childhood. So, um, you know, stamps related to butterflies or ice cream stamps or um, being outdoors, growing up as a child, both of my parents were public school teachers, and so they loved taking my brother and I um, across the United States um, to visit various sites. My brother is the biggest national park fan, um, and so with the great outdoor stamps, one of the reasons why I like the stamps is because that first image, there is a, a little kid there playing. Not sure, you know, who that kid is or what that kid represents, but I'm very thankful that the artist of that stamp um, provided a different shades of skin color um, in that in that image in order to promote inclusivity. At least that's my perception of it. Um, I think it's very very important as we think about stamp collecting to try to engage people from variety of audiences and stamps allow us to do that. Stamps share history and stamps allow us to feel appreciated. Um, That's my stamp story. My stamp story is one of inclusivity as well as outreach. Um, You know, during this pandemic, it's given us an opportunity to be innovative and, and be creative I'm extremely thankful of APS for doing a variety of stamp chats to keep us engaged. These stamp shows that have gone virtual have been an opportunity for people from all parts of the world 
who may have found it very difficult to travel in the past to still participate in a variety of stamp shows. So although COVID has presented us with a variety of challenges, it has also presented us with a number of, of opportunities. And one of the opportunities that I am thankful for was um, for the Harlem Renaissance stamps that were released in, in 2019. APS and Esper were able to collaborate um, for the um, Harlem Renaissance stamp ceremony. Um, and so, um, you know, I will forever um, remain uh, grateful to APS for that collaboration. So Heidi, thanks again for having me and to allow me to share my stamp story with everyone today. Have a great day, everybody. Oh, thank you, Warishal. Thank you so much. And, you know, what I love about this series is through, I keep notes as all of you speak and, and underline. And I love, you know, and Michelle, we had to tell a story about us and, and our countries. And I really appreciate the, the, that you bring up inclusivity. Um, <clears throat> for our friends who haven't seen uh, Dr. Faisan and Professor Mary Love put on a presentation about inclusivity on stamps and that's uh, our headliner on the APS YouTube channel. So it'll it'll meet you as soon as you go there. So that, that's a rousing stamp chat or uh, a, a presentation and we, we hope that you'll go and check that out. Thank you for sharing your stamp story. And I, I was hoping that Walter would make an appearance in the story, so thank you. Moving on into the inclusivity, we are, we are, I'm very happy to have uh, Laura Glazer on. She comes to us from the Portland Correspondence Co-op and I was uh, e-introduced via Lisa Foster, who was also giving a presentation at the virtual stamp show. And she oversees the, uh, the, the organization Women in Philately. So I, I was, I've been, really interested in the correspondence co-op. And then when she had the information and I saw Laura, it was like, it was Basharit. So uh, it was serendipity. So I'm so excited to introduce Laura Glazer coming to us from Portland, Oregon. Thanks for sharing your story, Laura. And there we go. And be sure to unmute yourself. Hi, I'm Laura Glazer, a letter writer and stamp user in Portland, Oregon. I'm honored to chat with you today about marking time and making memories and share a little bit of my life in stamps and correspondence. As a kid, I spent two summers at sleepaway camp. There was lots of swimming and arts and crafts and a lot of letter writing, sending letters, and getting letters, which was actually the highlight of camp. When I come across stamps that I used at camp, all the memories come back so clearly. And it is like I'm in the cabin writing letters and hoping to get letters. And I'm fairly certain that in 1990, we used this love stamp to mail invitations to my bat mitzvah. A major life event that included a custom invitation suite with matching thank you notes. Fast forward to 2008, when I started receiving photo postcards from Roy Aranella, a male artist living in upstate New York. He began corresponding with me after hearing my weekly radio show which was called Hello Pretty City. This was the first time I encountered someone using postage intentionally. As our friendship grew, I noticed the mail I received from him featured postage related to our conversations about photography, books, birds, and more. From there, I was fully obsessed. I spent hours with the Mystic Stamp Catalog picking out stamps with designs that delighted me. And because it did not make sense to me to buy stamps just to keep, 
I knew I had to use them. I wanted to put these little works of art into the world from my home in Albany, New York. That meant replying to Roy, writing to friends near and far, and developing a practice of correspondence through the mail. Around 2015, I found out about the Portland Correspondence Co-op, PDXCC for short. I yearned to attend their meetings in Oregon. They are a group that gathers monthly to make and share analog correspondence. It was a dream I had thought would never come true. But wouldn't you know it, my boyfriend got a job offer in Portland. And in 2016, we moved there. A week later, I attended my first meeting of the Correspondence Co-op. I've been going monthly ever since. Meter, meetings feature a typewriter bar, lots of laughing, snacks and skill sharing, shopping for stamps with our beloved stamp dealer, Bob Beal, and spending time with amazing humans who share a love of correspondence. Sometimes we take the show on the road like we did for Pipex Stamp Show in 2019. We even dressed for the occasion. Jenny Soup fashioned a mailbox hat. It was fully functional and accepted mail. During the pandemic, you can make mail with us. Find us on Facebook where we post the monthly mail exchange theme. Facebook.com slash PDXCC. I leave you with a gift from my good pen pal, and PDXCC member, Miss Polly. It is a poem called Stationary by Agha Sahid Ali. The moon did not become the sun. It just fell on the desert in great sheets, reams of silver handmade by you. The night is your cottage industry now. The day is your brisk emporium. The world is full of paper, write to me. You can find me on Instagram at Hello Pretty City. My email address is there too. And if you want, we can exchange emails and mailing addresses. I'm Laura Glazer coming to you from Portland, Oregon. And thank you so much, Heidi, and to all my pen pals and my family and friends and all the cats out there watching. Oh, that was dynamite. Once again, friends, just as Scott English says, there are many doors to this hobby. And the fact that I'm so happy that we had you on to talk about correspondence, Laura, that, and I, that's how I got into the hobby as well. So when I see those love stamps and, you know, I'm in my forties. So all of those stamps, they, I, 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 it's my mom. Like, I don't know what, there's this visceral reaction that happens. So Thank you very much. And for anybody who's interested in the correspondence, please, or, you know, the Portland, please go check out the Facebook page and, you know, snail mail is very cool, so much fun. And uh, the world is our oyster when it comes to philately. Thank you. Next up for another stamp story. Well, this gentleman joins us all the way from India. And what I've learned in the last few months of uh, the virtual landscape is what a what a burgeoning philatelic world or already established world there is philatelic world in India and I've really I've made some great friends just as many of you have as well and we've had some Indian philatelists on stamp chat and we'll continue to do so. I met our our speaker online on Twitter. Twitter is a very robust uh, philatelic um, social media tool. So if you're not on Twitter. I would definitely advocate that you are. Uh, that's where a lot of great conversations happen. And I met Darsh. I mean, who could not want to reach out to somebody who says that they love heavy metal and collecting stamps? So I knew I needed this person on as, <laughs> as, as a recruiting tool. Uh, but no, I'm really, I'm always excited to meet a fellow philatelist. And thank you so much 
Darsh for joining us. It's, it's quite late over in uh, India, but uh, from what I've been told by Darsh, he says that he makes, he's been up at three in the morning, five in the morning to catch different stamp chats and stamp bets, et cetera. So this is old hat. Thanks so much for joining us, Darsh. Tell us your stamp story. Well, thank you, Heidi. My journey through STAMP started 11 years ago when I was seven. My uncle had handed me over his STAMP collection as he noticed that I took great interest in uh, history and geography particularly. At that stage, I had no idea like how diverse STAMPs are. And um, I was too young to do some research so at that time. So uh, I remember once I had brought my stamps to the activity show and tell at school, and it was pretty unique compared to what the other children had brought. Mm -hmm. And um, I was after my parents to get me more stamps and eventually my dad got me a few. And um, um, like from the post office, we call that dark ghar or dark khana in Hindi. But with time, I started to lose my touch with Flatly and in the end, I just forgot about it. But this lockdown has turned out to be an excellent opportunity to start something left behind. Mm -hmm. My dad started painting again after 28 years and following his footsteps, I got hold of my stock book. And so I started going through my stamps again. I read about them, I researched and it left me fascinated like all the stamps um, I saw had some story in them. And I believe after all, they are pieces of art. The, they teach us about history, geography, or anything about culture and traditions from across the world. And at that point, I realized that it's not, it's not just a hobby. It's turning out to be a real passion. So in August, I started an Instagram page where I bring stories through stamps. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, um, uh, it helps me spread my message to all my audience and especially people in, uh, in my generation who have no idea what stamps are used for. And I received a great response from my peers and quite a few were actually seeing postal stamps for the first time. So it was like show and tell again after yeah. 11 years for me. It has turned out to be a great learning opportunity for me as I know I would never come across information that I do come across now on a day-to-day -day basis, like something about the colonial history of Congo, for example, or something about the uh, Chilean statesman. The topics are as diverse as these stamps are. And I think that the diversity of these stamps can help the audience find interests. Like I'm sure everyone among us must have once thought of being an astronaut and seeing an, seeing a stamp with a space shuttle printed from the space race era can indeed uh, reignite the passion for knowing more and more about the stamps. And you never know what you end up liking. I'm sure none of my friends must have ever thought of Darsh being a philatelist one day. Even my parents were surprised um, as they discovered this passion of mine. Well, you don't know what life holds in uh, store for you. Eight months ago, I never like imagined that I'll be sitting here sharing my philatelic origin story with you all. <laughs> and uh, finally, I'd like to show you the stamp I consider to be most unique to me because it was the largest one I had as a kid and it has a unique rhombus shape to it. It's from the year 1971 by the Mongol Post. And here I have it, my hands. It's still one of my favorite stamps. It shows, it shows three children feeding chickens. Like it's a spectacular sight to see on a stamp. <laughs> and yes, that's it for my philatelic journey till date. And I'm sure there's going to be more in the future because I've just started. Um, I'd like to conclude by saying it's been an absolute honor for me to be sitting here with these esteemed panelists and all the stamp enthusiasts joining me from across the world. I'd like to thank you all and a special thanks to the APS and especially Heidi for having me here. Thank you so much. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. This, th this is my favorite aspect of philately and I love the fact 
that you reminded us, you know, of your show and tell when you were a child and how it's kind of a show and tell now. And, and I redact saying the Twitter, it was Instagram. Instagram is a totally different beast for philately, really, really highlighting the beauty of stamps, really that artistic appeal. So if, if the art aspect of philately is what, what you know captures you, please have a look at on Instagram. Uh, I also really, uh, you know, I share the sentiments that the while COVID and, and our panelists have said this, while COVID has been obviously extremely challenging, um, it's really given us an opportunity to communicate with each other and look, and I love how you said that your father started to paint again Yes. And, and you found the hobby again, and you, you went from hobby to passion. So yes, that's, that, there's always a silver lining in this hobby and you can't get better than that. Thank you so much for joining us. And it's, real, it's been our pleasure and an honor that you would make the time to, to visit from India and uh, you know you have our support. So please stay in touch. Thank you so much, Heidi. It's my pleasure. Our next panelist to share our, the stamp story is Dr. Deborah Lee. She joins us from the great state of Mississippi where she is associate and uh, uh, professor and associate dean of public services at Mississippi State. And Dr. Lee and I began a conversation on Twitter because she always lets us know when she gets her AP, the American Philatelist. <laughs> I just adore that. First of all, we need to know that from a logistical perspective. We need to know that everybody's receiving their magazine. But, you know, after the, the push and the shove to, to get her out the door, it's always lovely to see it in the hands of collectors. So thank you so much and welcome to Stamp Stories. Thank you. And I used to, back when we traveled, I'd like to travel with my, my AP and take it with me and take pictures of it and, and, and airports and again, someday soon. Um, my stamp story started in fifth grade and it began with an essay that was in my reader in the class. A guy had written an essay and he talked about how he got interested in stamp collecting, something I had never even thought of. And he talked about what a stamp was and how you collect stamps and how he got started by looking in the back of his dad's popular mechanics magazine. Well, I was really intrigued by this essay. So I went home and I looked in the back of my dad's popular mechanics magazine and probably the same ad was there from H.E. Harris. And without asking anybody, I wrote off for the offer. And in return, I got a little uh, pamphlet that told me how to be a stamp collector. I got a little packet of free stamps and I got approvals, which I discovered you have to either buy or return. Um, but from that first packet, I was hooked and I fell in love with stamp collecting. There was nobody in my vicinity that collected stamps. There were no stamp clubs. There were no other collectors. I didn't meet another stamp collector until I was an adult, but it was a tremendous opportunity for me as a kid sitting in Eastern North Carolina, surrounded by tobacco fields, to have this tiny piece of paper from halfway around the world that reflected other cultures and other time periods, other languages, other assumptions about life. I, it just was a real eye-opening experience for me. So the first time I ever saw a language that was not English, I saw it on a stamp. The first time I saw major works of art, whether it's sculpture or painting, I saw it on stamps. And so they really connected me to a much broader world. But like a lot of people, once I got to college, money was tight and time was tight and I didn't keep on collecting. But even though I got rid of a lot of things from my childhood, that I did not get rid of. I carried that with me every time I moved, I moved it with me. And every now and then I would take it out and kind of poke it. And, and, and wonder what can I do with this? And um, then I hit 40, okay? And I was working full-time as a librarian. I was working on my doctorate in economics. I was teaching economics on the side and I was dealing with my dad being diagnosed with a terminal cancer, lung cancer, five states away. And so I was stressed, I was majorly stressed. And I started pulling out my stamps and realizing that even though it didn't make all those other things go away. It gave me a respite and it helped me deal with those other things by giving me sort of this time period when I could kind of dial it down just a little bit. Around the same time, I discovered the department head 
of the Department of Economics was himself a stamp collector of, and he had really an investment grade uh, US collection. And he's the first person who turned to me and said, oh, you're a stamp collector. You should join the APS. And I was like, APS, what is that? The American Philatetic Society. And I laughed because that sounded awfully fancy for what I did. But uh, he finally talked me into it and I joined, but I didn't really connect. And that connection didn't really happen or start to happen until 2003, when the Ameristamp Expo came to Biloxi, Mississippi, and I had never been to a stamp show. And I thought, well, it's in my state, I should go. And at that time, I was still just buying a few things off eBay, but I didn't really quite know what I was doing. And once I got to the stamp show and started talking to dealers, I realized I really didn't know what I was doing. I thought I would go to Biloxi, I would go to the show, I would go to a, a fabric store in Ocean Springs, and maybe a gallery. I would do a bunch of things on the coast and then come back on, on Sunday. I, I went there mid-morning and I still remember walking into the Coliseum at, in Biloxi and just stopping and staring and just being amazed that all of this stuff, all of these people were there for stamp collecting. And I, I had never experienced anything like that. I had never talked to a dealer before. And some dealers, to be honest, kind of dismissed me, but some were really nice. And there was one woman in particular who was like, oh, if you're gonna handle stamps, you need to ha use stamp tongs. Oh, you don't have a pair? Well, here, I'll loan you a pair. And here's how you use them. And, and, and she showed me a lot of different material that she had in her booth and, and was very patient with me, even though I was clearly not gonna be a, a big sale for her. Uh, and I have always really appreciated that. And I also was just blown away by the stamp exhibits. I didn't know stamp exhibiting was even a thing. And so the, the passion and the research that just jumps off the pages of a stamp exhibit, just, I, I was amazed at that. And I left that show, I stayed all day. I did not go even leave for lunch. Um, I, I didn't leave until they, they were locking the doors and they said, you gotta leave. And uh, I left that show realizing that this was a hobby I wanted to reconnect to, but I needed to spend some time thinking about what does the, how do I transition the hobby of my childhood into something that met my needs as an adult? And I did, that didn't happen overnight. It took some time for me to kind of think about what it was I wanted to do. And, um, but I finally decided that it was the expansiveness of stamp collecting that drew me in to begin with. And I wanted to keep that. So I decided to maintain uh, my status as sort of a worldwide collector. And I am an unapologetic worldwide collector. And I embrace that idea of collecting different times, different epochs, different countries, uh, and, and what the stories that you can get from behind them. And so it's, it's really been a journey. And it's a journey that's not over. And that's what's so cool to me about stamp collecting is that it's, there's always another chapter that you can write. There's always another uh, intellectual challenge that you can set for yourself and explore it. And some of my future chapters, I hope really include um, stamp exhi exhibiting. I, I really am attracted to that, to the research and to the um, and the mastery that's involved in that. So that's one of my goals, maybe in retirement. Um, I really want to visit the APS and the, the research library. That is high on my bucket list to get to. I have yet to get to a great American stamp show, the, the big show in August. That is also on my bucket list to do that because attending that stamp show back in 2003 really changed who I was as a collector and really helped me rethink my connection to the hobby. Certainly 2020 has been a challenge on a lot of different fronts, but one of the, the true benefits I think from it has been the opportunity to connect to people. I've been on Twitter for a long time. I just got my happy 12th anniversary tweet from Twitter. And um, so as a, a librarian, I, we use social media a lot, but I had not really used it a lot as a philatelist. And it was, it was really um, stamp, uh, uh, the Exploring Stamps YouTube channel that got me to thinking, oh, I need to, to push my boundaries just a little bit. So I started talking a little bit more about my life as a stamp collector and connecting to other connect, uh, collectors on Twitter. Um, I even finally gave in and set up an Instagram account, though I haven't quite figured that one out. 
I'm also very active on Facebook. And so it's an opportunity for me to connect to folks. And certainly the virtual opportunities of 2020 has just been phenomenal. I mean, I, it is not the same as sitting down with a, a dealer at the, at, at the bourse, but it is still has been an excellent opportunity to connect and to attend. I would not have been at StampX any other way. Um, so it was a great opportunity to do that as well. So I would encourage folks who are interested in stamp collecting or who maybe are thinking about picking it back up to spend some time exploring the doorways and the avenues in the hobby, because there's a lot of them. There's not just one pathway, one hallway into the, into the hobby. There's a lot of different ways you can enter in and there's a lot of different payoffs for you as you do it as well. So that's the, the short version of my stamp story. Remarkable, remarkable. And I love that you brought up and it, it seemed it is a theme of uh, of picking up a childhood hobby and and that journey that it that it doesn't end. And I, I wish I could remember verbatim, but Anne Rand, who is a notable stamp collector and was an author is, you know, uh, that's what she talked about the therapeutic benefits of stamp collecting as you went through with when you were going through your challenging, you know, tough times with your dad and, and whatnot that therapeutic benefit and then that the journey just doesn't end. I, I know that this sounds morbid, but sometimes I would, I just wish I could do like autopsies on philatelic minds because they're, they would just be so huge. I mean, the learning never ends. And, um, and I think, I think it's such a compassionate uh, hobby because we, we get to learn all about our, our, our brothers and sisters around the world. Just like you had said about uh, the first time you saw a language other than English was on a stamp. That's, how can you not get behind that? So thank you so much for sharing that. And we can't wait to see you in the airports with your AP in the, in the coming future. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. And we'll, we'll see you on Twitter. And maybe you can ask Darsh to help you out with the Instagram. Darsh, I call some time with you too. <laughs> anyway, okay, friends. The next friend that is going to join us for his stamp story is Mr. Kurt Streepy. Mr. Streepy is with the First Issues Collectors Club. He has been a guest on Stamp Chat before. And uh, he's got a pension for Hawaii, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to keep it brief and let Mr. Streepy tell his story. Thanks, Kurt, for joining us. Welcome. Thanks, Heidi. Um, yeah, um, as Heidi said, I've already done a couple of stamp chats, um, one on collecting Hawaii and one on collecting first issues. So I, I do encourage you to check those out on the APS channel. That'll kind of you can see where my journey is currently, but I'll, today I'll kind of cover how I got there. Um, so uh, like Michelle, I picked up collecting in the fourth grade. Uh, so I was about 10 years old. Uh, the postmaster uh, came to school one day and dropped off some brochures that had um, pictures of recently issued stamps in it and a little blurb about the stamp, you know, what the subject was and handed them out to everybody in class. So I took it home and and went searching through my parents' uh, letter holder, uh, seeing if I could find any letters in there that stamps. Because uh, honestly, up until that day, I'd probably never paid any attention to how the letters got there, um, uh, you know, as far as what came on the letters. Um, but um, so searching through there, I found a uh, Herman Melville stamp. Uh, this was in uh, 1985. So they just, I think in 84, they issued the Herman Melville uh, stamp. And then I found a dog stamp that was also issued that same year. So I, uh, you know, very carefully peeled them off the envelope, uh, you know, making them thin as tissue paper, but uh, I didn't know the difference. So um, I, and then I took tape and taped them into that little brochure. And I thought, well, that's pretty, you know, can I find these other, you know, six or seven stamps that are in here? Um, so did the same thing in my grandparents' house and on down the line looking for these stamps that would fit in this spot. So, so that kind of got me started, um, you know, thinking, well, you know, uh, and I always like to challenge, had to complete something. Once I started something, I had to complete it. So um, as I, uh, at the time I was a Cub Scout, uh, and as a Cub Scout, you always got a magazine called Boy's Life. Uh, so I went, uh, I, I, you know, had been looking in the classified ads at the end of that. They always had all kinds of great offers. 
Uh, I had been um, uh, planning on buying some sea monkeys, uh, but uh, I found an ad in there for uh, 100 stamps for a dollar plus a self-addressed stamped envelope. So I, um, you know, sent off, there was actually a few of those, so I sent off for two or three of those. Um, and, you know, all of a sudden the stamp showed up. Um, and like uh, Deborah, I learned about approvals that, oh, yeah, we'll give you these for a dollar, but then here's a whole other pack that you uh, either need to pay for or return. So, uh, so that was a learning experience. But, uh, but anyway, those first group of stamps came, and, and first uh, was a pack of U.S. stamps, and, and they weren't thin as, as tissue paper. They were, you know, good stamps. So uh, I thought, well, wow, these are a lot better than the ones I peel off the letters. Um, but um, the second group that came had some foreign stamps, and, and, and that's really what triggered because uh, being um, living in rural Indiana, uh, very rural Indiana, um, there was a lot of things I had not seen before uh, at that point in time. So when those foreign stamps came, you know, again, like Deborah, it was the first time I'd seen some foreign languages. It was certainly the first time I'd seen some foreign cultures. And, and I can remember one of the sets that was in there, and we'll see how well this shows up. Probably not very well. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, was a, a set from Liberia where it had a bunch of um, masks, you know, certainly way outside of, of anything that, that at that point I had seen before. So that was very intriguing uh, to look at those and, and to think where they came from. Uh, so, so that really, you know, kind of drove that. Uh, and, and at that point, I was really getting interested in geography and history anyway. I really loved looking at old maps and seeing how they changed. Um, as time went by with wars and, and, and such that, that changed the borders of the countries. Uh, so so this, at this time, this uh, worldwide stamps really kind of hit that at the same time as having some stamps from these countries. Um, but, you know, where I lived, um, you know, and of course, at this time, uh, mid-1980s, there was no internet. I couldn't Google how to collect stamps. Uh, there was no Twitter or, uh, you know, websites to check. Uh, and I was, you know, hours away from a stamp uh, dealer if I even would have known how to find one. So it was a lot of trial and error, uh, you know, learning. I, I made my own stamp album out of, uh, you know, notebook paper and scotch tape and, you know, just taped the things in as I got them. Um, I, I eventually, you know, kind of turned the corner when the, the school had a book fair and there was a worldwide album. Uh, for sale at the uh, book fair, just a little paperback one. Um, but whenever I, I opened it up, uh, you know, there was a few stamps in there and then there were hinges. I thought, wow, you know, what are these things? Um, so it was certainly uh, some learning the hard way. Uh, I had also prior to that tried using a, um, a photo album. I took one of my mom's photo albums, um, you know, the ones with the sticky paper and the, the clear front. Uh, dumped all the pictures out into a shoebox, which she did not appreciate, uh, and started putting my stamps in there. Uh, but I quickly learned once you got them in there, they, they didn't come out very well. So it really wasn't a, it wasn't a uh, a um, enhancement over the tape on paper. So uh, so I was pretty happy when I found those mount those uh, hinges. Uh, but more importantly, in the back of that book was an ad for um, uh, Grossman. Um, stamp company in New York and sent away, got a price list, got hinges, got a book on the basics of stamp collecting. That was, you know, the aha moment of, of how all this stuff goes together. And, um, you know, that really set me on my way uh, as, as having some bit of a knowledge of what I was doing. Uh, but I still, you know, was not fortunate enough to have, you know, anybody around me that collected stamps. Uh, I didn't have any family member uh, that could kind of mentor me and didn't have, didn't, you know, have access to clubs, uh, you know, so, so it was still a lot of trial by error. Uh, but eventually I stumbled along uh, APS. Um, I was a junior member way back when um, and uh, was on there and, and, you know, started to learn by reading the journal. Um, was able to work out uh, some trading relationships with other collectors uh, through ads I saw on Lens. And that really helped. They were, you know, very um, helpful to me. They had answered my questions I sent with each trade and, and, and really kind of grew my knowledge there. Um, but uh, at some point as I was heading, you know, into high school, I guess, um, the, the OCD part of me uh, got a little overwhelmed with worldwide. 
uh, you know, I had an album at that point in time, a, a loose leaf album, like a, a Harrison album. And um, there were, you know, holes for stamps I didn't have. And then there were stamps I had, there weren't spots for. So, so for me, that became a little, little, little too much. And I thought, okay, I'm going to narrow this down and, and focus on something. Uh, and, and flipping through the AP, um, I, I found my first area to focus on. There was a story about um, stamps of Hawaii. And at that point, I didn't have any stamps from Hawaii at all. Uh, and I thought, okay, wow, you know, this is, you know, a, a, this is a state. Why did they issue stamps? So, so that led me down that trail of, of starting Hawaii um, and, and sent away for, you know, for, found a dealer that had some Hawaii and sent away for those. Uh, and, but then, you know, as I started looking at that, and I still kept my U.S. collection too, um, I, I quickly realized, you know, there's only so much Hawaii that a 16-year-old um, kid can buy, um, you know, that, that's reasonably priced. Uh, so, uh, but I found a dealer uh, through AP that, that did uh, town councils. And, and this was an area where I could buy a stamp for a dollar or two and, and, and you know, collect these different town councils. So, so he really, you know, was a big mentor to me in this. And, and again, I'd place a small order about every month and, and probably had, you know, a page full of questions and he'd answer them all. Uh, and he'd send me some freebies, you know, some damaged items, maybe that are space fillers and, and whatnot, but, but was very generous with his time and his knowledge. Um, uh, so which was huge for me. Um, but as I expanded on this Hawaii, you know, I, I still had that desire to, 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 you know, learn about all these countries around the world. Um, so I, I found the next ad I found was uh, collecting number ones of the world. Uh, Dave Olson, uh, both of these dealers, Warren Crane and Dave Olson, unfortunately both passed away. Uh, but again, same kind of deal. He, he was so generous with his time and his knowledge. Uh, I bought my first penny black from him um, you know, for, you know, 10 bucks because it was all beat up, but I owned the first stamp. So, so that was great. Uh, and I really appreciate the, the time that they, they granted me. Um, so, so that kind of led me down those two paths. And, you know, since then, um, you know, finding those mentors that, that helped me, uh, understand what I was collecting, uh, was huge. And that got me through, you know, high school and into college and took a little break when my, when my daughters were born and, and then kind of got back into it uh, a little more full steam, uh, particularly of late. Um, and now I've been trying to, trying to help others. You know, we, we, uh, through our first issue collectors club, we, we have a Twitter account and a Facebook now, now a Facebook account too. Uh, and I have a Twitter account just trying to be there to answer questions, uh, share some knowledge, uh, I've joined my local club here and, and, you know, passed on my how to collect stamp book to a, to a new member that had just, you know, inherited a stamp collection and but wanted to do something with it, but didn't know what. And, and you know, so, so trying to be that resource to him um, has been good. Uh, and, and as we said, just trying to reach out. So, so, you know, I, I guess, you know, that, that's kind of my journey, but I'll also kind of advocate that, that everywhere on, on here, when you have that chance to, uh, to, to mentor someone, to help someone, um, it really makes a difference. I mean, if we want to build the, the community, uh, being helpful and respectful to even, you know, what might seem to be basic questions makes a huge difference in a, in a new collector. Uh, so, so I just want to kind of uh, leave you with that. Okay, Eddie. Thank you, Kurt. And I, I love how you came back full swing with the mentorship because that was something that I was writing in my notes, mentor, mentor, mentor. And it's really sweet how you shared how you were a child and, and putting it with tape and with the photo albums and, you know, dumping out your mom's photos. But that's that that's the trial and error. And, you know, so often we, we're, we're afraid to try anything new, but but you know, as as you mentioned, and even though you were, you were a kid when this happened, that um, the exploration and the and the thrill of exploring, and then asking questions and finding all these people there, you can find mentors in this hobby, and um, 
you know, in one case, I want to say like, do it quick because, you know, we have, we have a top heavy uh, demographic and it's important that, that you, you, we get to them. And if there's any way I can facilitate any relationships, friends, you know that I'm happy to do that. And, and Kurt, you can find him on Twitter. And like you said, on, uh, uh, I think you're on Insta, right? But no, no Insta, okay. just, just Twitter okay. and, uh, First issue clubs now on First Facebook. First issues, well. right? So be sure uh, to reach out. We're we're all here. We all want to help, and uh, just like with Esper and and its outreach. So so don't ever hesitate. Please ask questions and let's share all this institutional knowledge. Thanks so much, Kurt, for sharing your stamp story. Thank you. Our next philatelist, our next collector to share their stamp story comes, uh, we're going to be sharing his video that he sent in. He was unable to join us, but you know, never fear. Uh, we're gonna make philately happen. And uh, I always like to quote Charlene Blair, another fabulous philatelist from Esper, by any means possible. And so here we have Mr. Jack Topping, by any means possible joining us. And he, uh, he has Jet Philatelic, which is a new podcast. I met him on Twitter and let's let him tell his stamp story. Thanks, Scott Tiffany. Hello everyone, my name is Jack Topping. I wanted to first thank the APS for having me today on this stamp chat to share my stamp story. My entry into stamps was fairly recent. It was about a year and a half ago. And I had just finished up watching some coin collecting videos on YouTube because I am a coin collector as well. So I just finished up watching some coin collecting videos on YouTube. And uh, in my recommended page, there were Graham Beck's Exploring Stamps uh, videos on YouTube. So some stamp collecting videos uh, among them was Graham Beck's and others. And so I said, no, why not? You know, I'm interested in history first and foremost, and I know coins definitely relate to that. And so do stamps. So I said, let's just, you know, why not take a look and see what, what's there? And instantly I found it absolutely fascinating and interesting. Quite surprised it took me that long to, to find those kinds of videos and get interested in stamps. But nevertheless, the next morning I went to breakfast with my sister and my grandmother. And sure enough, there's a craft store next door to the restaurant. And my sister wanted to go in and get some stickers and, and art supplies. So I said, sure, let's just go in. And uh, believe it or not, there was a hobby section inside the craft store. And I said, you know, let's go take a look at the hobby section. We just got two stickers. Why don't we go look at what interests me? And so I wanted to see what kind of coin supplies they had in relation to what I have in my collection. And they had a stamp section too, next to the coins. And I said, well, I just watched these videos last night. I was explaining that to my sister. I said, I was just watching these videos last night. It was so fascinating. Let's see what they got. And they had all kinds of different supplies for stamp collecting. And believe it or not, they had actual stamps there in um, little, little containers. They had a little vinyl plasticky type bag full of, I think it was 500 worldwide used stamps uh, for a couple of dollars. And I said, how are, how are there all these different countries worldwide stamps in this little craft store in Florida? And that really fascinated me. So I said, you know what? I have to get them. I have to check it out. So I got one, one bag of, uh, you know, regular used worldwide stamps. The other one was a set of dinosaur stamps. I didn't realize it was a, a topical bag. I didn't know what topical was before um, until now recently, but I, I learned what that was. And then I had the packet of dinosaur stamps and the packet of worldwide stamps went to the checkout. And that evening I was absolutely fascinated. I, I spent the entire night going through both bags of stamps, looking up where they're from, you know, what is the history behind that stamp? Where was the postmark even on some of them? And uh, from then on, I got really, really interested in, in philately and the stamp collecting. And uh, I had um, really begun to, to enjoy and research into the different types of, of philately, into postal history, into really all, all parts of this hobby. And in March of this year, I launched Jet Philatelics, which is my blog my, and my podcast, and then later this month, my YouTube channel, to really explore the history and exciting nature of philately. And that's where I am today. And so I am proud to continue into my research and my, my love for philately. And uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my story with all of you today. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.
Oh, yeah, that was from Jack Topping. Please go visit his podcast, Jet Philatelics. And, you know, we'll have to definitely get uh, Graham back on. I'd like, I'd love a buzzer as, as many times that we hear that uh, exploring stamps has opened the, the doorway to the hobby for, for so many people. And we really appreciate it. And we're, and we're proud to sponsor the AP or the Exploring Stamps um, video series. So check them out, Exploring Stamps on YouTube. Our next stamp story, thank you for everyone for continuing to be with us through all of the, this tapestry of a philatelic origin stories. Our next presenter is Mr. Ted Tishka. He is the host, the producer and host of TED Talk Stamps which is also on YouTube. He has uh, been a presenter on APS Stamp Chat and shared his knowledge of producing a, a, a YouTube series with us. Again, philately not only, well, I mean, there's so many, there's so many things that this hobby does, but it also inspires us to take leaps, right? So uh, Jack was just telling us how it inspired him to become a podcaster. Well, Ted is now producing videos. So Ted, let's see your video and unmute yourself. It's you are in the hot seat. Okay, here I am. Okay, can we see your video that? No, it keeps telling me the host has me turned off. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, start my video. There Ooh. we go. All righty. Get rid of that message. Hello, everyone. Hello, Heidi. Thanks for having me back again. Um, so my my origin story is, I I used to think that I was kind of an oddball for being uh, a late starter, because uh, most of the collectors of my generation, I'm in my mid sixties, and. Uh, it seems like all those guys, they started as we lads, seven, eight, nine years old, 10 at the latest. Well, I didn't start until I was 19. And that's, uh, I was in the Air Force and I was in the NCO club one evening and just talking to a, a, uh, one of the other guys. And somehow the subject of stamp collecting came up. Yep obviously on his part, because I, I didn't know anything about stamps. Not, I didn't know there were commemoratives. I didn't even know there was more than the, you know, the stamps that was current for the, for the letter rate. <clears throat> and uh, so I got interested in what he was saying. And then uh, he asked me, you know, he told me, hey, come on up to my room. I'll show you my stamps. And went up there and he grabbed a big, big, stamp album must have been a Scott International and you opened it and the first thing I saw was a page full of the Australian ruse which immediately caught my interest and just caught my attention I had no idea there was this world of stamps and I guess the Australian kangaroos just made such an impression I'd to this day, I don't remember anything else I saw that he might have showed me. If he did, I don't know. It was the kangaroos was it. And so uh, that, that started me interested in stamps. I found a, uh, uh, this was in Mill Valley, California, right across the bay from San Francisco. So I found a, uh, a uh, stamp shop in nearby San Rafael, I believe it was. And I started learning about all these other stamps, found a Lynn Stamp News, I bought it and took it home and then immediately subscribed to it and just started looking at all the ads, reading all the articles, started getting um, stamp approvals. And this was, this was just amazing to me, this whole new world of, of uh, well, of stamps. <laughs> And uh, I immediately got a, a, uh, a Scott US album. And uh, later on, shortly thereafter, I got stationed in Alaska 
and uh, my stamp collecting didn't go with me. Then after that, I got stationed in Port Austin, uh, Port Austin, Michigan. And as it happened, one of my coworkers was a stamp collector and we struck up a pretty good friendship and we go uh, cruising on weekends into the Tri-Cities area, of Saginaw, Michigan, and just start uh, going to as many stamp shops as we could. And that's also when I got into getting spreading out in the worldwide. I learned about the Channel Islands because this, this was what, 70, 76, 77. So the Channel Islands had only been issuing their stamps for a few years at that point. And, and that was a whole new world. Uh, well, I kind of skipped ahead because what got me interested, what really captivated me about US stamps back at the beginning was when I discovered uh, the US bicentennial stamps were starting to be issued, even though you know it was a few years before 19, uh, 1976. And I, one of the issues was the Boston Tea Party block of four, that is one continuous design on the four stamps. And to me, that was the coolest thing. I said, man, four stamps, one design making up four stamps. So, you know, that was just cool. <laughs> and so back to Port Austin, Michigan, my, uh, my buddy and I would always go out on weekends and find as many stamp shops as we could. And I, like I said, I spread out into the Channel Islands and got the White A stamp album, which was a really top quality album. It has nice thick paper and the, the colorful pages. And uh, uh, after I got, I left the Air Force in 79 and somehow uh, my stamp collecting didn't follow me. <laughs> I don't, oh, I know what happened. Yeah, the, the girl I was seeing at the time, I was a big comic book reader as a young boy. And then I met this girl who would become my wife, who was a comic book collector. And that diverted me <laughs> away from the stamps. And I really uh, got into the uh, comic, uh, comic collecting world with her. And so uh, over the years, the stamps, it was still in the back of my mind. And later I picked it up again. And uh, this was with uh, someone else. And uh, when we split up, she, we, we both collected uh, stamps, the US stamps. But when we split up, she got custody of the stamps. <laughs> And uh, so mm, uh, I got in the 80s, I got heavily into the comic business then again, and I was dealing in comics. And later on in the 80s, and into baseball cards. And so, you know, I was pretty flighty. I was going from one collectible to another. And then for a while I was collecting coins, uh, cameo proofs and uh, uh, I'm not sure when I finally got back into stamps again. I know uh, I was in California and then I moved to Texas in 88 and uh, you know, shoot, I really can't even remember the timeline now. But I eventually came back around to, <clears throat> to stamps. And when the internet started going, uh, I started meeting other collectors online. And that really fueled the old passion for stamps. And uh, it just went from there then. <clears throat> and just I'm, I'm a real information junkie when I get delve into a, you know, an interest like, like stamps. I just want to read as much as I can. I have the, the uh, oh, Gesundheit, right. my wife. <laughs> uh, and I would go online and join stamp forums. I'd search YouTube for videos. And there was very little to find on YouTube. There was the, uh, 
There was the APS channel. The, uh, there was a podcast called uh, Stamp Show Here Today who had a YouTube channel, but they all they did was post the audio from the podcast. They didn't have any kind of video. And then uh, other than that, I saw, I found a few random stamp videos. And then one day I happened upon Graham Beck exploring stamps. And I say, yeah, this guy's got the idea. And, uh, and me thinking that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for information all the time and I can hardly find any on YouTube. I decided, well, why not give it a go myself? So I, you know, I, I decided to start a channel. Even though I'm not the most knowledgeable. All you do is just, you know, talk about what I like. You know, I, I can't give a lot of history. Although I do a crash, I do a crash uh, uh, cramming, studying on the subject before I will... Uh, tape an episode and learn as much as I can. But uh, basically it's just, my channel is just about me sharing my interest and my love of those particular stamps. And which brings me up to today. And thanks for having me. Well, thank you, Ted. Yes, it's always a pleasure to have you, and that voice is unmistakable. It's it's such <laughs> that's such a nice sound to it. We really appreciate it, and you can check out the chat box during uh, our final presenter of today's stamp stories. You'll see that you you're getting accolades and attaboys on that. So, I think that's another aspect of the ho hobby that most of us can agree agree on. We're information junkies, and that's why I'm so intrigued by philatelic brains because it's there are so many rabbit holes and there's just so many opportunities to continue to learn about the world around us. Uh, comic books and baseball cards. I mean, that, that's a common theme and uh, you can definitely find baseball card information on another stamp chat on YouTube. We've had uh, uh, several presentations on baseball cards and stamps. So you'll wanna go check that out. And uh, comics, that's forthcoming. So 2021 is going to be a great year. Thanks so much, Ted, for sharing your stamp story. And last but not least, thank you, uh, Rakib Ol Hassan, for, for waiting so patiently. We're so excited to have you. Rakib is, <clears throat> by his emails, I get the feeling that he is extremely enthusiastic about philately. Rakib is in at Louisiana State, is that correct? Yes, I am in uh, Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. And he's getting, he's working on his PhD and uh, so we're really happy to have him. I mean, the fact that he can work on a stamp collection at the same time getting a PhD, like several other uh, of our philatelists, uh, our panelists, shows what uh, extraordinary individuals this hobby attracts. So, Rakeep, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us your stamp story. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, Rakeep Ul Hassan. I'm originally from uh, Bangladesh. Uh, so, uh, but right now I am in the US. Uh, I'm doing my PhD in Louisiana State University. Uh, uh, it's in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So to tell about my stamp story, I uh, basically uh, collected uh, stamps in my childhood. Like my father and my elder brother, we all together were enthusiasts to collect stamps. And we had uh, uh, the old fashioned uh, stamp albums where we uh, put stamps with gums. And <laughs> uh, like we collected a few stamps, but uh, after, childhood passes, somehow we, we got disconnected with the hobby. And, uh, but still I had the albums in my uh, apartment, uh, in, in our apartment. Uh, so uh, later on when I passed my university, uh, mm. like uh, I was still waiting to uh, join my first job. Uh, like I had a lot of free times and uh, suddenly I, I was checking my uh, stuffs in my uh, in my collection, and I thought, okay, so uh, why not I start collecting again stamps? And actually, I have some uh, inherent uh, interest on history, geography, archaeology, uh, 
a uh, lot of other things. And I saw that uh, stamps are published or published with a with the theme of all these things. And uh, it, it's, it's a very small piece of paper, but it holds a lot of things like all the things I just told, history, geography, uh, uh, even a stamp holds a piece of history. Like I identified that there are a lot of countries are no morely exist, but their stamps are there. And if you have, uh, if you have uh, those uh, stamps from those countries, you're actually holding a piece of history or you can feel proud of uh, preserving history. Like that, that's, that's uh, some of my motivations to uh, start collecting stamp again. And also I am a, a great appreciator of uh, miniature art. Like it's uh, really fascinating. Like, I don't know how uh, artists uh, do these uh, like fit a uh, uh, fit a visual story in the, in a small piece of paper, but it it looks fascinating. Like I actually cannot uh, express these in words, but uh, like you understand, like I'm very much enthusiastic about these. And also, uh, okay, uh, let's talk about my uh, collecting uh, procedure. Like. Um, most of the time I collect stamps through a uh, kiloware, like I buy uh, 10 or 12 dollars of stamp packet that has like near around a thousand of uh, stamps. And most of the, most of the times, uh, uh, most of the time, uh, like more, more than half of the stamps are like doubles and uh, majority of them are definitives, uh, which is not actually my area of interest. Like I'm more interested on uh, commemorative stamp. So uh, like more than half of the stamps are not useful to me, but still this is a great way to do treasure hunting. Like you don't know after uh, uh, checking all the stamps, you may find some, some country stamps which normally exist or you, will, you may not find those stamps in, to the dealers. So this is this gives me a great pleasure, uh, and what I told like, I I feel proud to keep a piece of history. Okay, uh, and sometimes I buy collective stamps, uh, but rarely. Like most of the time, I rely on Kiloware, and also like uh, financing is a is an issue to me. Like I'm still a student, so I actually cannot afford to buy a lot of stamps. But I wish I could by all the stamps from a single country. Like I, I have a plan to uh, collect all the stamps of US and from Bangladesh and I, to make a full album on that, on those. But I don't know, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. But, uh, but uh, right now I'm doing some projects. Like one of the project is to collect at least a single stamp from each stamp publishing entity, uh, including uh, perished countries or existing countries. And, uh, and like uh, uh, I searched through internet and I found a lot of lists uh, that has uh, listed over thousands of countries or entities, uh, including past and present. And uh, those doesn't match like some uh, lists uh, have uh, only 800 entries. Some lists have more than two, 3,000 entries, but I'm trying to collect those things. And also I uh, have interest on uh, commemorative stamps because that has uh, more visual information and more attractive, more colorful. Uh, okay. And uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, that, that's my stamp story and, and uh, um, I have I have few other ideas like I want to uh, uh, tell a visual story on stamp collecting. I know like uh, collecting based on uh, topical themes is a popular trend, but uh, I want to go deep, not only sticking to a specific theme. I want to go deep to uh, extract some story 
uh, to tell a story to the audience so that I can present in future uh, stamp uh, fairs. Uh, yeah, yeah, like th th that's my story so far. And I, uh, I, I will give my email and my Instagram in the chat box. Like I'm uh, looking for uh, similar minded people who wants to share their ideas. I want to share my stamp ideas with other people. Uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, thank you for hosting me. Uh, thanks, Heidi. Well, it is, it is definitely our pleasure. And panelists, if you'll go ahead and share your cams so we can see your faces, the faces of philatelists from around the world, uh, from all different, different avenues. I really appreciate it, Rakib. That was, I love that for you, it was a family affair and that you, it sounds like you have a real passion for exhibiting like, like Dr. Deb. Um, yeah, exhibiting is gonna be very interesting to see how it turns with 2020, I mean, 2021 and you know, the, the, the advent of all this virtual technology. Um, it's really exciting time. And um, like-minded people, well, you can start by becoming a member of the APS. Yes, join our 2020 challenge. Help us make 2020 new members a reality here at the American Philatelic Society. We've been uh, around and exercising fabulous fellowships for 134 years. We love to support our clubs and affiliates and um, we welcome you into the fold. Visit stamps.org backslash join now. If you can't remember that, just go to visit stamps.org. We've got a ton of information, a lot of great articles, the American Philatelist, uh, and a lot of free stuff right now available from the library. Thank you so much to our presenters. I'd like you to uh, to be sure to check out the stamp, the chat box because there was a lot of um, a lot of love being shown there, and I appreciate for the attendees who were um, who were chatty. I, I love when the chat box blows up, so thank you so much. We thank you for your attendance, both here live and our APS YouTube channel viewers. When you do have a moment to check this out, and we ask you all in thanking our presenters again. Thank you so much for for sharing, you know, these these intimate stories. Um, it adds a richness to the hobby that I really want to promote out there. You can learn more about the APS, of course, stamps.org. There's Esper, esperstamps.org. There was the First Issues Collectors Club. So a lot of great organizations to check out the Portland Correspondence Co-op for all of our friends. There's so many doors to the hobby, correspondence, mail art, snail, snail mail, you name it, history. It, it's just fabulous. Like one of our attendees said, they're uh, like tiny dynamite that explodes within us. I couldn't agree more. That's what stamps do. So we'll have more stamp stories coming up in uh, to finish out 2020. And of course, 2021, these were our debut episodes. And so they were a little bit longer then we will uh, organize for our upcoming stamp chats or stamp stories. If you have a stamp story that you'd like to share, let us know, Heidi at stamps.org. Love to hear your stamp story. You can write it. We're happy to uh, maybe put it on our blog or join us on camera. Thank you so much, friends. Remember, uh, there's plenty more stamp chats where that came from. Go to APS YouTube channel. You'll see Wara Shaw's inclusivity uh, talk and so much more. Ted, uh, Ted Talk Stamps and how to start a YouTube channel if you wish. But uh, we're here for you and we really appreciate that you're always here for us. So have a beautiful weekend and happy National Stamp Collection Month to everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>